Hey everyone, welcome, welcome. My name is Charlie, and today I'm going to be making an aquarium in Stardew Valley. You know me though, and I just love to make things difficult for myself, so in order to make my aquarium, I need to catch all the fish myself. This means I need to unlock all the special areas too. For instance, I'll need to get through pretty much the entire mine to catch the fish at levels 20, 40, and 60. I'm gonna make it a little easier on myself in some other areas, like if I donate enough artifacts to unlock the sewer, then I'll unlock the witch hut area, or if I upgrade my house, I'll get the catalog. Just little stuff like that, so hopefully I don't go insane. I'm really, really happy with my finished aquarium, and I found this to be a fun challenge, so I hope you enjoy it as well. Alright, let's get right into it. So we're gonna be living on Fishtown Farm today, and there's really only one acceptable outfit. Yeah, there we go. I'm honestly kind of embarrassed, but I passed out on day one while watering parsnips. Like, that's never happened to me, how? Nonetheless, I headed to the beach the next day and I got my first fishing rod from Willy. I'd caught a fair amount of the basic spring fish by the second day and I got to fishing level one that night, so I continued to fish for the third day as well. After leveling up a bunch, I headed to Willy's and bought a fiberglass rod. Then, on the fifth day, I sold all my parsnips and caught the rainy spring fish, like the catfish and the eel, which brought me to fishing level 5. Most of the sixth day was spent fishing at the mountain lake, donating gems, and exploring in the mines. Hmm. This one will do. The next day, I headed to the secret woods to get the wood skip, and I got distracted by the traveling merchant, but I actually decided to buy a puffer fish, just to save myself the trouble later. Oop. I caught the wood skip fairly easily and then headed back into town. Oh god, I'm stuck. Oh, <laughs> alright, that was not what I wanted. The next fish on my list was the sandfish, so I bribed Pam with some beer, hoping that she'd take me to the desert. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Pam. I really appreciate it. After catching the sandfish, I decided to head back because I was not about to deal with the scorpion carp. I didn't think I was emotionally prepared for that, so I spent the rest of the day in the mines. Oh my- I've never seen this many slimes, what the heck? Oh god, oh god, oh god. <laughs> Beside the fact that I spent six in-game hours getting past this infested floor, I was progressing pretty quickly and I ended up reaching level 25. A cat! I'm gonna name it... Sashimi. That seems fitting. Once I'd adopted my cat, I headed back to level 20 to catch the stonefish and continued to journey through the mines. The next day was the egg hunt, and I was actually a little nervous. I decided to buy some strawberry seeds to make some quick money, and then I actually killed it. I got 12 whole eggs, that is so many. Look at that, 12 and a half even. I could have gotten that one with like one more second. I am so happy. This is actually a very good fisherman's hat. I decided to upgrade my pickaxe and then spent a bunch of time collecting iron for my crab pots. After chopping down a bunch of trees, I'd saved up all the materials for the house upgrade, so I purchased that from Robin and then spent the next couple days just suffering while trying to get the ice pip. Please, I'm begging you. <laughs> no. The next morning, I sold a bunch of my crops, earning enough money to purchase the iridium rod, so I picked up that bad boy and then returned to floor 60, but still no luck. Because my house upgrade was finished, I was able to claim my furniture catalog and start experimenting with all the different items. I came up with a design I really liked, but I quickly realized there was a bit of a flaw in my plan. You can't place tanks outside? Are you joking? Yeah, that, that changed things a bit. Now I'm gonna have to do a lot more work. Oh my gosh, guys, that's so crazy. I actually got a small business loan for the aquarium. That's so exciting. Using my startup money, I began to buy an absurd amount of sheds from Robin. Then I chopped down all the trees and stumps and got rid of the rocks, clearing the entire area. So my revised idea for the aquarium is that I'm gonna have a really nice outdoor area with a shed for each season that's gonna be decorated accordingly. This is the spring shed, so I'm adding a lot of leaves and flowers and bright green colors to just liven it up a little bit. I also put all my spring fish in the tanks, and I thought it came out super nice. Once I'd finished the decorations, I bought the catalog from Pierre and changed the walls and floors. 
I also added this mini fish tank to display the legendary fish for the season, which was pretty fitting because I caught the legend and also the ice pip in the next couple days. With all the sheds built and decorated, it was now the beginning of summer, so I began to catch all the basic summer fish and I also managed to get the crimson fish after a couple tries. Alright, here's the finished product for the spring shed. I'm not going to show you the other sheds yet because I feel like it'll be really cool to see them all finished at the end. A bit of a surprise, you know? The next few days were spent catching a bunch of different fish, donating stuff to the museum, and harassing these seagulls. Hey Willy, here's a fish. Can you please bring me to Ginger Island? Oh my goodness, all the townspeople are just so supportive of my aquarium. It's just so heartwarming. Um, I'm stuck. How about this way? No, this is quite possibly worse. Once I'd figured myself out, I caught all the tropical fish, including the stingray and the pirate's cove. By the seventh day of summer, I'd caught the mutant carp and fully upgraded my house, and now that it was all finished, I decided to start decorating it. Alright, so here's my receptionist. <laughs> Look at his little eyes, oh my god. Also, I caught the scorpion carp on my fourth try, so I don't know what's going on here. After catching a big chunk of the fish on my summer list, I began to decorate the outside of the sheds with some different furniture items and labeling them with signs, and I was really really happy with how this turned out. About halfway through the summer, I purchased an ungodly amount of fish ponds and I began to put some super cucumbers into them. I thought the light purple color would look really really nice. I also purchased a Joja membership and finished all the community projects, allowing me to get access to the sewer dungeon and the witch hut for the dark talisman quest. This meant I could finally catch the slime jack and the void salmon. Wait, I'm gonna turn some of these into void salmon ponds. I feel like that would look really nice. As the days went on, I began to make crab pots mainly to catch the lobster and the crayfish. Most of the other ones I had gotten from foraging on the beach or like treasure chests. I also continued with the decorations and I placed each of these trees individually. Every single one of them. Once I'd finished the main decorations, I caught all the rest of the fall and winter fish including the legendary fish and the ones in the night market. And with this blob fish, I had completed the challenge. So let's do a little walkthrough of the aquarium. Alright, so the entrance area is on this side. We've got some nice grass pillars that make a nice little entryway. Very tasteful. If you go up here, there's a fish pond up here and all the crab pots on the beach. It's a nice area to just vibe, do a little fishing. The first spot that you have to go though is in here. This is what I like to call the blobby because there's a lot of blob fish. <laughs> this is my receptionist, um, Rodney. He pretty much handles all the stuff around here. To the right is the fish room. <laughs> Didn't know what to put here, so I just wrote fish on the floor. I like to imagine that this is like a little photo op area. Every aquarium I've been to, like when you walk in, they'll take a picture of you with some fish and then give you a number and they try to get you to buy the picture that they just took of you with the fish when you didn't even ask for it. So I'm thinking maybe that's a good business model, you know, if you can't beat them, join them. I didn't really have that much time to decorate the upstairs rooms, so I just put um, a lot of shrimp in these. <laughs> In these tanks so you know maybe this is like this the, the grocery store part where it's like the freshest shrimp in all the land yeah that's that's terrible okay so that's like the lobby area and then you come out you've got your ticket and you're like oh my gosh aquariums and then you you go over to the left here and there's just a little vibey area you can you can go fishing up here they've got a little rod some tackle a little chicken that i forgot about there's also some benches if you're feeling just winded from that like 10 foot walk that you made to the blobby, you know? I think my favorite part is all these trees that I placed. Like, I have like, I, I planted all these trees and then I placed these furniture trees individually. There's like so many of them, but it turned out so nice. We've got like the fish ponds out here and there's like the two different kinds of purple, which I think it was a super good call. So, yeah, and the, the trees wrap all the way around like i i spent so much time on these trees i feel like it gives it that kind of like nestled in the woods aquarium vibe you know 
over to the right here we've got like a dedicated fish pond area and then yeah it just circles back to the beginning so then we've got this walkway that just goes down the middle of all the sheds and we're gonna start in the spring shed i know this is the one shed you've seen already but i just think it's pretty i like it a lot I actually organized the fish based on where they came from, so we've got like our river fish, our ocean fish, lake fish, weird fish, I don't know. Also we got our legendary fish here. To an untrained eye, this may look like a largemouth bass, but it is definitely the legend. I definitely did not sell that on accident, so... Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so now we're moving on to the summer shed. We got this nice little grape tropical tree theme outside. And then you go inside and I really like this one. The leaves hanging on the wall look super, super good. These are just all the summer fish scattered around. I particularly like this puffer fish. He just looks super done with his existence. Yeah, I like this one as well. I think it looks good. And this is actually a legendary fish. So then we're moving on to the fall shed and I, this is my favorite one for sure. I love the mushrooms and the lanterns outside. I feel like it's really, really good. And then on the inside, it has like this cozy little haunted house kind of vibe. I am so proud of this one. I don't even know why. I just love the color palette, like the browns and the dark burgundies. It looks so good. And yeah, these are all the fall fish that I caught. Still organized roughly by the area they came from and then the legendary fish right here and then last but not least we've got the winter shed i just had a bunch of pines here i really wish that i could have done like snowy pines but the, the furniture was limited I, i'll be honest <laughs> so then you go inside and it's like a frosty theme you know you got the the garland on the walls the christmas tree in the center there are not a lot of winter fish so i basically just put a bunch of the night market fish in because they're blue and kind of wintry. We also have the glacier fish down here, nothing new. And yeah, that's the aquarium. I think the sheds look good, but my favorite part definitely has to be just the outside area. Like I thought this looks super pretty. It really reminded me of one of the aquariums I've been to as well, where it had like stuff on the inside, but then like little walkways outside where you have like the fish and then you have like naturey areas with a bunch of pine trees and stuff. This was really fun for me to do as well. I, I've never tried like building in Stardew Valley or trying to make it look pretty in any way. So it was a very good challenge and I found it really enjoyable. So yeah, I'm really happy with it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me create it, enjoyed watching me struggle as usual. If you did enjoy the video, feel free to leave a like or subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you here. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.